All right, so uh, let's dive into something that seems like it's been absolutely everywhere lately. Yeah. Chat GPT and all this hype about how it's going to like change how we all make money. Right. Like every day there's a new article or video or something claiming that you can get rich quick with AI. Mm -hmm. Is it really that easy? I'm not so sure. Yeah. So uh, you sent over this YouTube video the other day. Yeah. It's called Seven Genius Ways to Make Money with Chat GPT, huh. which, I mean, that already kind of feels meta, right? It does. Like we're using a video about AI to figure out how to make money with AI. Very meta. So uh, the video lays out seven business ideas. Right. That uh, supposedly you can launch using Chat GPT. Okay. And uh, I guess we're going to deep dive into those. Sounds good. Figure out if these are actually legit or if this is just more hype. Yeah, let's take a look. Cool. Right. So the video ranks these ideas from like least promising to most promising. Okay. So uh, let's start at the bottom of the list with number seven. Okay. Starting a branding agency powered by ChatGPT. Yep. A branding agency, huh? Yeah. So the video claims that ChatGPT can help you come up with business names. Okay. Write website copy. Mm -hmm. Even brainstorm logo. Like all this stuff that you wouldn't really think a chatbot could do. That's a lot to ask of a chatbot. I know, right? What do you think? Like, is that even realistic? What is fascinating? Yeah. I mean, ChatGPT can generate text in all kinds of creative formats. Right. Like taglines, mission statements, yeah. even things that sound pretty professional. Mm -hmm. But branding is about way more than just words. Yeah. You know? Right. It's about like the whole feel of a business. Exactly. So can AI really understand all those nuances, like who the target audience is and how to like oh. connect with people on an emotional level? Exactly. And translate all that into a brand identity that actually resonates. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think that's where the human element is still crucial. Totally. Because a good brand isn't just about sounding catchy or trendy. Yeah. It's about conveying like the essence of a business. And connecting with customers in a way that feels authentic. Totally. So I guess chat GPT could be like a helpful assistant. Yeah. Like it could help with brainstorming or like writing some basic copy. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to replace a human branding expert anytime soon. No, I don't think so. At least not yet. All right. So next up on the list is using chat GPT to build simple apps. Oh, interesting. By connecting it to an API. Okay. Now that's where things get a little more technical. Definitely. And to be honest, I'm not even sure I fully understand what an API is. Uh-huh. It sounds like something you'd order at a fancy coffee shop. Right. Well, in this context, an API or application programming interface okay. is basically a way for different software programs to talk to each other. So they can communicate. Yeah. Think of it like a waiter at a restaurant. Okay. You, the customer, or in this case, the app you're building, mm -hmm. you give your order, which is a request, to the waiter, which is the API. Okay. The waiter takes that order to the kitchen, which is chat GPT. Right. Where the food, which is the response, is prepared. Okay. And then the waiter brings the food back to you. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Thank so the you. app is using the API to send requests to ChatGPT, and ChatGPT is sending back responses that the app can use. Exactly. So like if you were building a scheduling app, right? the API could ask ChatGPT to like find available time slots or send appointment reminders. Exactly. That's a great example. Cool. So the, the video suggests using this to create apps for things like scheduling customer service data entry, mm -hmm. like tasks that businesses need, but they might not have the resources to build custom solutions for. Right. And if you can build a simple app that solves a specific problem, yeah, you could potentially sell it to a bunch of different businesses. Exactly. It could be pretty lucrative. But this definitely requires more than just basic coding skills, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. You need to understand how APIs work how to structure data for AI and how to make sure the app actually works properly. Mm, it's definitely not a beginner level project. Yeah, that's a lot to juggle, especially if you're not coming from like a tech background. You're right, this isn't like a passive income stream mm -hmm. like some of the other ideas might be. This yeah. requires a deeper understanding of software development and how AI actually works. All right, so let's move on to the next idea, okay. which is one that probably hits close to home for both of us. Yeah. Freelance writing. Oh yeah. I mean, this is where ChatGPT's ability to generate text really comes into play, right? Take a time. Like the video claims you can use it to come up with article ideas, mm -hmm. create outlines, even write entire articles. That's both exciting and a little scary, isn't it? It is kind of. I mean, it's exciting because it could make things so much easier. Right. 
But it's also kind of scary because, like, well, what if it puts us out of a job? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the video actually addresses that. Oh, really? Yeah. It specifically says that this freelance writing thing might be a short-lived gold rush. Because everyone's going to start using AI to write. Exactly. As more and more writers adopt these tools, yeah. the competition is going to increase like crazy. Right. Which could drive down rates and make it harder to stand out. So it's like any new technology or trend, mm -hmm. the early adopters might have an advantage for a while. Yeah. But then eventually things level out. Exactly. Everyone catches up and then it becomes yeah. less yeah. special. Okay. So that raises a big question then. Yeah. How can writers use these tools in a way that creates like lasting value? Right. And sets them apart from the crowd. That's the key question. And can AI truly replicate the things that make human writing so good? Like what? Like nuanced storytelling, emotional connection, a unique voice. Yeah. You know those things that a skilled human writer brings to the table? Right, because AI can't really understand emotions, can it? Not in the same way that humans do. Okay, so it's not just about making money anymore. No. It's about the future of writing itself. Exactly. It's a much bigger conversation. Wow. Okay. So before we get too deep into that rabbit hole, mm -hmm. let's uh, let's look at the next money-making idea. All right. Combining chat GPT with a software called BookBolt to, like, dominate niche markets on Amazon by yeah. publishing books. Oh, BookBolt. Yeah. I've heard of Amazon's self-publishing platform, but I've never heard of BookBolt. Yeah, so BookBolt is a platform that's specifically designed for creating and publishing low-content books. Low-content books? What's that? Things like journals, planners, coloring books, that kind of thing. Okay. It helps with formatting, cover design, and getting your books listed on Amazon. So the idea here is to use ChatGPT to write the actual content of the books. Yeah. And then use BookBolt to handle all the design and publishing stuff. Exactly. Interesting. And I guess since most people are creating those low content books, right. there's potentially less competition for books with actual text in them. That's the strategy the video lays out. But it kind of raises some questions for me. Like, yeah. first of all, what's the quality of the content that ChatGPT is generating for these books? Is it original? Is it engaging? Will people actually want to read it? Those are all good questions. And beyond that, like, are there ethical considerations here? Mm -hmm. Like, is it okay to present AI-generated content as your own? Yeah, that's a tricky one. And what about intellectual property? Like, who owns the copyright to that content? The publishing industry is already trying to figure out how to deal with these questions. Yeah. And this strategy just adds another layer of complexity. It's going to be interesting to see how things evolve as these AI writing tools get more sophisticated and more accessible. Definitely things are changing fast. So we've covered branding agencies, app development, freelance writing, even book publishing. Wow, that's a lot. I know, right? And we're only halfway through the list. What else is there? Okay, so next up is starting an email marketing agency. Email marketing. Yeah, and the video seems pretty excited about this one. Email marketing has been around forever, though. I know, right? Yeah. But it's still a really effective way for businesses to reach their customers. So how does ChatGPT fit into all of this? That's the question. Well, according to the video, ChatGPT can help with like all aspects of email marketing. Really? Yeah. From generating ideas for campaigns okay. to writing subject lines and email copy mm -hmm. that actually gets people to open the emails. Mm -hmm. It can even personalize emails based on customer data. Wow. Which sounds pretty powerful. It does. So it's like taking all those tasks involved in email marketing. Right. Like writing subject lines crafting, engaging copy, segmenting your audience, personalizing messages, analyzing the results. Yeah. And ChatGPT could potentially automate or assist with a lot of that. Right, like it could handle all the tedious stuff. Exactly. And free up the human marketer to focus on strategy and building relationships with clients. It's like having an AI assistant. Yeah. Working behind the scenes to make your life easier. I like that. And the video even mentions a separate video on how to actually start an email marketing agency using ChatGPT step by step. Interesting. So they're really pushing this as a viable business opportunity. It definitely sounds intriguing. Yeah, yeah. but like with any business, success comes down to more than just having the right tools, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. You need to understand your target audience, build relationships, deliver value mm -hmm. that goes beyond what a chatbot can provide. Couldn't agree more. It's about the human element. All right, we're down to the final two ideas. Okay, hit me. This is where the video claims things get really interesting. All right, let's hear it. Number two is starting a niche YouTube channel. 
A YouTube channel, huh? Yeah, it seems like everyone's talking about starting YouTube channels these days. It's a massive platform. It is. And if you can create content that people actually want to watch, yeah. there's a lot of potential for making money. Through ads, sponsorships, all kinds of things. Right. But the challenge is standing out in a sea of content. Yeah, there's so much competition. Exactly. So yeah. that's where the video suggests using ChatGPT to like come up with video ideas. Oh, okay. Write scripts, even find stock footage. So basically taking care of all the heavy lifting. Uh, yeah, so you can focus on editing and uploading yeah. the videos. It's like having an AI brainstorming partner. I like that. Constantly generating ideas and helping you overcome creative roadblocks. But what if everyone's using ChatGPT for this? Yeah, what happens then? Won't all the YouTube videos start to sound the same? That's a good point. Like, where's the originality? Where's the human voice? Yeah, it's a valid concern. So I guess it comes back to that idea of AI as a collaborator rather than a replacement. Right. You can use it to generate ideas and scripts, mm -hmm. but you still need to bring your own personality. Your own perspective. Your own unique style to the table. Exactly. Otherwise, you risk getting lost in the algorithmic noise. Totally. Because it's the human element that makes content truly engaging and memorable. Couldn't agree more. Okay. Drum roll, please. Uh-huh. We've reached the number one most promising idea according to this video. All right. Lay it on me. Starting a YouTube support service agency. A YouTube support service. Yeah. So instead of creating your own YouTube channel, you're basically providing services to other YouTubers. Interesting. So what kind of services? Well, the video says you can use ChatGPT to generate video ideas write scripts, come up with keywords, even brainstorm titles for other creators. Ah, so it's like packaging all those AI capabilities we've been talking about into a marketable service. Exactly. And since a lot of YouTubers are constantly looking for ways to improve their content. And grow their channels. Right. There's definitely a demand for this type of support. It makes sense. But wouldn't you need to really understand how YouTube works to offer this kind of service effectively? Absolutely. I mean, having ChatGPT as a tool is one thing. Yeah. But knowing how to use it strategically to help YouTubers succeed is another. Right. You need to understand things like SEO, audience engagement, content trends, all those nuances that go into building a successful channel. So it's not just about plugging into ChatGPT and letting it do its magic. No. You need to bring your own expertise and experience to the table. Exactly. AI can be a powerful tool. Yeah. But it's still just a tool. Success ultimately depends on human ingenuity strategy and the ability to leverage these tools effectively. Well, that was quite a whirlwind tour of ChatGPT money-making ideas. It was a lot to take in. We covered a lot of ground from branding agencies to YouTube support services. Yeah, we did. So what stands out to you as like the most viable or interesting opportunity? Hmm. You know what's fascinating is that these ideas span a wide range of industries and skill sets. They do. It really highlights how AI could change how we work and earn a living. Yeah, but it also raises a lot of questions. Oh, for sure. Like, how do we make sure that these AI tools are used ethically and responsibly? Yeah, that's a big one. And how do we adapt our skills and strategies to thrive in this, like, rapidly evolving landscape? Those are important questions that we need to be talking about. Because AI is here to stay. It is. And it's up to us to figure out how to navigate this new frontier. Well said. What's a great segue to... The deeper exploration of some of these questions and ideas. It's exactly. Let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll dive even deeper into this fascinating world of AI and its potential impact on the future of work. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground already, exploring some of those money-making ideas from that YouTube video. Yeah, lots of different angles. But as we were talking, something kind of struck me. Oh, what's that? It's easy to get caught up in like the excitement of all this, you know. Yeah, the shiny new toy syndrome. But we have to remember that this video is just one perspective. That's a really good point. It's just one person's opinion. Right. There are tons of opinions and predictions out there about AI and how it's going to affect work. Yeah, like everyone's got a theory. It's important to like approach all this information critically mm -hmm. and form our own conclusions. Totally. I mean, the YouTube landscape is full of people claiming to have all the answers. Oh, yeah, for sure. But... As with anything online, it's wise to take things with a grain of salt. Definitely. But even with that in mind, mm -hmm. I do think this video offers some valuable insights. I mean, the creator clearly has experience in the online business world. They do. And they're actively trying to figure out how AI tools fit into that landscape. It feels very authentic. Yeah, it's almost like we're getting a glimpse into their thought process as they experiment with these ideas. I agree. It's like we're right there with them. Yeah, and that makes it more relatable. Speaking of which, let's circle back to that 
YouTube support service agency idea. Okay. That the video presented as like the most promising opportunity. The number one idea. Yeah. One detail that really stuck with me was that emphasis on using chat GPT to come up with keywords. Ah, yes. Keywords, the lifeblood of YouTube. I know, right? Yeah. They're like the secret sauce to getting your videos discovered. Exactly, because when people search for specific topics, right. YouTube uses those keywords to decide which videos to show in the results. So if you're not using the right keywords, yeah. your videos might never even see the light of day. Exactly, they get buried in the search results. And no one ever finds them. And that's where the video suggests ChatGPT can help. Like, it can take the guesswork out of keyword research. Yeah, you can give it information about your niche, your target audience, even your competitors. Oh, wow. And it can generate a list of relevant keywords to target. That's amazing. It's like having an AI research assistant. Yeah, constantly working behind the scenes. To help you optimize your content. It could be a game changer for new YouTubers. Definitely, especially if they don't really understand how search engines work. Right, it levels the playing field a bit. But keywords are just one piece of the puzzle, right? Oh, for sure. Creating high-quality, engaging content that people actually want to watch is still the most important factor. Couldn't agree more. Content is king, as they say. So it all comes back to that idea of AI as a collaborator. Yeah. Rather than a replacement for human creativity and expertise. We keep coming back to that. We do. It's a recurring theme. ChatGPT can help with tasks like keyword research and script writing. Mm -hmm. But it can't replace the human touch. That makes a YouTube channel unique and engaging. That's what people connect with. Exactly. It's about finding that sweet spot, that balance between leveraging AI right. and infusing your content with your own personality, your own voice, your own story. Your own unique perspective. Yeah, that's what makes people want to subscribe to your channel and come back for more. That reminds me of something we were discussing earlier. Oh, yeah. That niche YouTube channel idea. The one where you let ChatGPT come up with everything? Yeah, the video made it sound so easy. Right, just plug and play. Just use ChatGPT to generate ideas, write scripts, <laughs> even find stock footage. But I wonder if everyone's doing that. Yeah. Won't all the videos start to feel kind of generic and formulaic? Like cookie cutter content. Exactly. It's like the old saying, garbage in, garbage out. Right. If you're feeding chat GPT generic prompts. Yeah. And not putting any of your own thought or creativity into the process. The output is going to be generic too. Makes sense. So the key is to use chat GPT as a starting point. Yeah. A springboard for your own ideas. Use it to spark your imagination, mm -hmm. but don't let it dictate the entire creative process. I like that analogy, a springboard. Right, like you got to jump off and do your own thing. Refine the scripts, add your own personal stories, and most importantly, inject sure. your own personality into those videos. That's what makes them stand out. Exactly. Okay, so I'm starting to see how this works. Me too. It's like having a writing partner mm -hmm. who can help you overcome writer's block and brainstorm ideas. Yeah. But ultimately, you're still the author of your own story. You're in control. Exactly. And let's not forget the power of editing. Oh, yeah. Editing is everything. Even if you're using ChatGPT to generate scripts. Right. The way you edit the footage, add music, create a compelling visual narrative mm. that can make all the difference. Think of ChatGPT as like a raw ingredient. Okay. It's up to you, the chef, to turn it into a delicious meal. Ooh, I love that analogy. So ChatGPT is the sous chef prepping the ingredients, doing the grunt work, but... The human is still the head chef creating the masterpiece. It's a beautiful collaboration. It is. Okay, so we've talked about YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. But let's shift gears for a moment and circle back to that email marketing agency idea. Right. This one stood out to me because it's not about creating something totally new. Right. It's about using AI to enhance an existing business model. That's a great observation, and I think we're going to see that pattern play out in a lot of industries. Like AI is going to revolutionize how we work within existing systems. Exactly. AI isn't necessarily going to invent whole new sectors, yeah. but it's going to change how we operate within existing ones. So instead of thinking, how can I use AI to create a completely new business from scratch? Right. Maybe the question is, how can I use AI to make my existing business more efficient, more profitable, or more competitive. Exactly, that's the question to ask. And in the case of email marketing, yeah. AI can help automate a lot of those time-consuming tasks. Like crafting subject lines, segmenting audiences, personalizing messages. All right, all those things that take up so much time. And that frees up the human marketer to focus on the things that AI can't do. Like strategy, creative direction, 
building relationships with clients. Exactly. That's where the real value lies. The human touch is still essential. It is, especially when it comes to building trust and rapport with customers. Because AI can craft a compelling email. Yeah. But it can't replace that human connection that builds loyalty and drives sales. Okay, now I want to touch on an idea that's been on my mind a lot lately. Okay. Especially since I'm a writer. Oh, yeah, what's that? That freelance writing idea. Right. The video mentioned that this opportunity might be short-lived. Because of the increased competition? Yeah. As more writers start using AI, it's going to get harder to stand out. And rates might go down. Right. So what's a writer to do? Should we all just give up and become beekeepers? Uh huh. I wouldn't recommend that just yet. Okay, good. I think there's still a place for skilled human writers. Yeah. But we need to adapt. Adapt to the AI takeover. In a way, yeah, we need to embrace these AI tools. Okay. And figure out how to use them to our advantage. But how? Like, if AI can write just as well as a human, why would anyone pay a human to do it? That's where things get interesting. Okay. AI can generate text, but it can't replicate human experience, empathy, or creativity in the same way. So it's like lacking that human element. Exactly. A skilled human writer can bring nuanced emotion, a unique perspective to their work. Right. That AI, at least for now, just can't match. So it's not about competing with AI. No. It's about collaborating with it. Finding ways to work together. Using it as a tool to enhance our own writing. Exactly. Rather than trying to replace it entirely. Think of it like this AI can handle the more mundane tasks. Like what? Like research outlining or even drafting basic content. Yeah. yeah. But then you, the human writer, you step in right. and bring your own skills to the table. My storytelling ability, yeah. my voice, my ability to connect with readers. Exactly. I like that it's like AI is the sous chef again. Uh-huh. There's that analogy again. Prepping the ingredients and doing the grunt work. But the human chef is still the one creating the masterpiece. It's a beautiful partnership. It is. And it highlights the importance of focusing on the skills that AI can't replicate. The uniquely human skill. Right. Okay, that's some serious food for thought. Indeed. I think we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. We have. But there's one more idea from the video that I want to circle back to. Oh, which one is that? The app development one. Ah, yes. The idea of using ChatGPT to build simple apps. By connecting it to an API. Right. This one is super fascinating because it's a bit more technical. It is. But also has the potential to be incredibly lucrative. If you can pull it off. The video mentioned creating things like scheduling apps, mm -hmm. customer service apps, even data entry apps. Yeah, lots of possibilities. And once you've built the app, you can sell it to multiple clients. Potentially creating a recurring revenue stream. It's a pretty compelling business model. It is, but as we discussed earlier, it also requires a certain level of technical expertise. Definitely. You need to understand how APIs work, how to structure data for AI, and how to make sure the app actually works. It's not for beginners. No, but for those with the right skills, yeah. it could be a real game changer. I think it also highlights another key trend in the AI landscape. What's that? The democratization of technology. Interesting. Tell me more. Like, with tools like ChatGPT and APIs becoming more accessible, mm -hmm. it's opening up opportunities for individuals to create and launch their own tech products. Without eating a huge team or a ton of funding. Exactly. It's like the wild west of the tech world. Ah, I like that. Where anyone with a good idea and the willingness to learn can potentially strike gold. But as with any gold rush, yeah. there's also a lot of hype and potential for disappointment. Right. It's not all sunshine and roses. It's important to approach these opportunities with a realistic mindset. Do your research. Be prepared to put in the work. And be prepared to fail a few times along the way. And... It's important to remember that technology is constantly evolving. Oh, yeah. What's cutting edge today might be outdated tomorrow. So continuous learning and adaptation are key to staying ahead of the curve. Couldn't agree more. Okay. Now I want to shift gears for a moment. Okay. And talk about something that the video didn't really address. What's that? But I think is crucial to consider. Okay. I'm the time. impact of all this on the future of work. Ah, yes. The big question. As AI becomes more powerful and more common. Yeah. It's natural to wonder how it will affect our jobs, yeah. our careers, the way we earn a living. Will robots be taking over all the jobs? Exactly. Will we all be replaced by algorithms? That's the fear, isn't it? It is. But I think it's important to approach this with a balanced perspective. Not get carried away by the hype. Right. Because while AI will undoubtedly automate certain tasks mm. and change the nature of many jobs, I'm sure. 
it's also creating new opportunities and possibilities. So it's not all doom and gloom. No, the key is to focus on developing the skills and mindsets that will be valuable in an AI-powered world. The skills that AI can't replicate. Exactly. Yeah. So instead of fearing AI, yeah. we should be embracing it. As a tool. Right, a tool that can help us work smarter, not harder. And unlock new levels of creativity and productivity. It's about shifting our perspective. From seeing AI as a threat. To seeing it as an opportunity. Exactly. But that raises another question. What's that? As AI becomes more integrated into our work lives, yeah. how do we make sure that it's used ethically and responsibly? That's a crucial question. Like, we need to consider the potential implications of AI. On things like privacy bias, fairness. Right. And we need to develop guidelines and regulations. To ensure that AI is used in a way that benefits everyone. Not just a select few. It's a big responsibility. Okay, well, that's a pretty sobering thought to end on. It is. But I think it's an important one. Definitely. AI is a powerful tool, mm -hmm. but it's not a magic solution. It comes with both opportunities and risks. And it's up to us to navigate those carefully and thoughtfully. To use this power wisely. Feel said. So, uh... We've explored all those ChatGPT money-making ideas from that YouTube video. Yeah, from branding agencies to YouTube channels to everything in between. Some definitely sounded more promising than others. Mm -hmm. And we talked about uh, you really need that human touch to make these things work. Right. AI is a tool, not a magic bullet. But, you know, there's one idea that keeps coming back to me. Oh, yeah. Which one? That book publishing idea. Using ChatGPT and BookBolt to create and sell books on Amazon. Yeah, you know, I actually tried something similar a while back. Oh, really? I was working on a project that needed a lot of written content. Uh -huh. It was kind of boring technical stuff. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hey, why not see what ChatGPT can do? So you put it to the test. I did, and it definitely churned out a ton of text. <laughs> Some of it was surprisingly good, like coherent and grammatically correct. But... But it was missing something. That's... Yeah, that human touch that makes writing engaging. Right. It's hard to replicate that. It really is. I ended up spending way more time editing and rewriting than I expected. It's like trying to polish a lump of coal into a diamond. Exactly. Yeah. Like thinking back to that book publishing idea, mm -hmm. I wonder if the same principle applies. You mean could ChatGPT write a whole book? Yeah. Like, sure, you could use it to pump out pages of text. But would anyone want to read it? That's the question. Can AI really replicate the art of storytelling? That ability to connect with readers on an emotional level. The craft of weaving words into something meaningful. Yeah, those are qualities that are hard to program into a machine. And beyond that, there's the whole issue of originality. Mm -hmm. If everyone's using ChatGPT to write books, well, well, they all start to sound the same. That's a valid concern. Like, where's the unique voice, the author's perspective, the human experience that makes a book special? It's like we're entering this weird new world where the lines between human creativity and AI are getting blurred. We are, and it's raising some big questions. Like, what does it mean to be a creator in an age of AI? That's a question that's going to be debated for a long time, I think. It's not just about writers and book publishers either. No, this applies to musicians, artists, filmmakers, anyone who's using their creativity to express themselves and connect with others. So how do we adapt to this new reality? That's the key question. And I think it comes down to redefining what it means to create. Okay, so instead of trying to compete with AI, yeah. we need to find ways to collaborate with it. To use it as a tool to enhance our own creativity. To push the boundaries of what's possible. It's a new era of collaboration. Humans and AI working together. To create something new and amazing. So maybe the future of creation isn't as bleak as some people might think. Maybe not, but it's definitely going to look different. And that brings us back to that need to adapt and develop new skills. The skills that AI can't replicate. Critical thinking, problem-solving, creativity, emotional intelligence. Those are the skills that will set us apart. It's almost like we need to become more human, not less. To thrive in this new world. That's a beautiful way to put it. And it brings us back to that idea of focusing on the why. The why behind our actions. Like, why are we creating in the first place? Is it just about making money? Or is there something more? Are we trying to solve problems, make a difference in the world? Those are the questions we need to be asking ourselves. Because technology is just a tool. It's the human heart and mind that will determine how we use it. To create a better future or to perpetuate the same old problems. And on that note, 
I think it's time to wrap up this deep dive. Yeah, it's been a long and winding road. We've explored some fascinating ideas, yeah. unpacked some complex concepts, and hopefully sparked some thought-provoking conversations along the way. To our listeners, thank you for diving deep with us today. We hope you enjoyed the ride. We hope this episode has inspired you to think critically about the potential of AI and the role it will play in shaping our future. Because the future of AI is being written right now. And we all have a role to play in shaping it. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and keep exploring. The ever-evolving world of technology